guys, welcome. It is April 1st, 2024. My name is Laura and I am the um, owner, designer for Back and Porch Fiber Co. And welcome you guys. It is, did I already say it was April 1st? Gosh, I don't know. I'm really struggling with the whole April thing. So it is April 1st. I am outside because it is just such a beautiful day. I may have to film this whole thing again inside. I have no idea. It is a bit windy out today and we have like the birds were chirping earlier today the we have peacocks in our neighborhood and sometimes they squawk so and i think my daughter's boyfriend is headed over and i'm out on the front porch so i'll have to pause for that as well but we're gonna just get started because i've literally been trying to film a podcast for four days now so um I want to share with you guys a couple things. I did a deep dive into all of my whips and I have them all sitting here next to me. And these are deep dive whips. And I'm totally lying to you right now because there's one more inside, but I'll grab that at the end. So I have frogged something and I have pulled back on something. I've ripped out on something that, and then I figured out how to revamp it so that I didn't have to take it all the way out. Um, so last year, if you've been watching me for a while, last year you will have remembered that in January I did like a work down your whips, a little knit along, um, and I worked down so many whips, but embarrassingly enough, and I'm so ashamed to even admit this to you guys, that I have still on the needles one of those whips from last year. It's been on my needles for like two years and there are quite a few hangups with it. Um, but really ultimately it should be done by now. It's so silly that it's not. Um, okay. So, Oh, the other thing that I'm going to share with you guys a little bit later is the April dish class. And I've already started on it this morning. I was able to cast that on and start on it. So I'll share with you guys, the pattern that I am doing there and then I will also at the end I'll put in a clip to pick another winner for the dish cloth um, back porch fiber code dish cloth make along and um, so you can enter by commenting on one of my YouTube videos that talks about the dish cloth make along you can enter in um, on Instagram by tagging by using the hashtag uh, be FC dish cloth mal you can do that as well um, you can even email I have um, one sweet sweet follower who um, emails me and so I pop her name I just keep a spreadsheet so it's easy enough to add your name to the spreadsheet no matter how you enter um, so I will be updating my spreadsheet in a little bit and then pulling a winner I don't even have a prize picked out, so I'm just excited that I have a minute to podcast. And um, yeah, I'll do all that. I'll film it all later after I get this here done. So I'm not even going in any specific order. I am literally just gonna pull a, pull a project out and show you guys. So this one here, I finally picked up again, and I don't even know why I put it down. It's the simplest sock. It's really not hard. I want to say it's like candy floss or something like that. If I can find the pattern, I will put it down here. Um, and I want to say this might be a Hello Stella um, yarn. I don't even know. It's been that long. My neighbor's pulling out with her electric car, so it has like that little hum noise. So if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Okay, so here, I just did the heel. Actually, I did the heel twice this weekend. Um, but there I am. And it's just this little like four stitch pattern super simple. I cast on 56 stitches for my size and I'm using a size US1 Chow Gu double pointed needles. Um, yeah, I don't know. I love this and I wish that there wasn't the pink in this color. Like I, I love the pink in this, 
but I think that my guys would really, really like these socks and the tone of the sock if it didn't have this little like uh, mauve pink color in there. Um, but so this is just the first sock. Why this has been on my needles for so long, I don't even know. It's so silly. But nonetheless, here I am and I use my progress keeper to um, mark where I put the heel at because I'm, I honestly don't even know with this pattern because I don't have the pattern in my bag with me. It's such a small little bag. And I don't even know if I am doing this pattern. Can you guys see that? Like these little cables. I don't even know if I am doing them in the same spot every time. Like, or how many rows in between. I don't know. Um, which seems so silly, but I'm gonna just knit the next one. I think I did a 25 row cuff. That kind of looks like that to me. So I'll do the 25 row cuff and I'll, I'll double count. And then I will just knit until they are the same length and then do the heel again. Um, but at least at this point, it gives me a starting point for where to do the heel and then also how much farther till I have the toe to do. So that is whip number one. Sorry, I don't have a lot of details on it. I wish that I did. This is like deep stash yarn that I had. And it's, I don't know why I didn't use it. I absolutely love it. Um, maybe I was just kind of like savoring that. I don't know. All right, we're gonna put the pile on this side after I talk about it. So, okay, the next one, I feel a little bit silly even showing you because technically there's nothing on the needles. But there was something on the needles. I was doing the DRK um, Everyday Socks by Andrea Mowry. And this is the color that I was doing. This is, I really don't wanna take this out. I wanna say that this is a Hue Loco. Yeah, this is a Hue Loco yarn. I wanna say like honey, honey. It's just honey. I was gonna say honey bee or honey flower or something. I don't know. So Nicole from Hue Loco Honey. It has it's this beautiful yellow with these flecks of pink and dark browns in there. And I love this yarn. I was making these socks for my daughter, and I chose the um, a smaller size than what I normally would cast on, just thinking that it was with the ribbing. It's a fully ribbed sock, and so I was thinking that with a fully ripped sock, it would stretch quite a bit. And I should have gone up a size, honestly. Um, I really, I don't know why I didn't just instinctively do that, but it was so tight around our ankles. And it, so I, it was tight around my ankle. And then I had my daughter try it on because they were for her. And she said the same thing. And she's like, mom, I don't think I'd wear these. And so I took them out. Um, and I don't know, I might do like a blueberry waffle sock or the Hermione's everyday sock, just something with a little bit of a textured pattern in there. Um, yeah, cause I think I'm gonna be doing some vanilla socks in my future here pretty soon. So I, I kinda want something with just a fun, easy to remember pattern is what I want. So I'm showing you these because I did have them on the needles, but I frogged them because they just didn't work. And you guys, I'm here to encourage you. It's okay to frog things. Just do it. If you're, if it's not bringing you joy or you can't see yourself wearing it or you can't see anybody else wearing it, frog it. It's not worth the time that you guys put into it. Just, just do it. And then you have yarn to reuse. I love just knitting and the process of knitting. So I don't mind frogging it and reusing it. Now I will say that if it's been in the project for a long time, you may want to um, like reskein it on a Swift and then, um, give it a little bath because it, uh, it kind of does this little thing here, like that little curly cue. It looks like, you know, when you have, when you've worn braids in your hair for like overnight and you take it out, they're all kinked. Your hair's all kinked. It's kind of what it reminds me of. Um, and so when you give it a bath, it just, helps to relax those fibers again like it's brand new yarn 
and what I noticed because I did that in my advent shawl and what I noticed is that the section that I didn't wash that yarn it it doesn't sit well it's a garter and it just doesn't sit as it should it's uh and I'm a little bit nervous that when I block it, it's actually going to loosen up that area just because it's not, I feel like there's extra fabric there. It's really weird, I don't know. But I, I do recommend washing it when you are frogging projects, if they've been in that project for a while. The one that I frogged had actually been in a project for a year. These I frogged, they weren't, um, it wasn't an ongoing long-term project, so. Okay, so it's not officially on the needles, but I showed you because I frogged it off the needles. Okay, let's do the big guy here. Just a fun little tote bag that I got. This is the Pink Fizz sweater, and this is one of those sweaters that, um, it's just a long-term project. I'm okay that it's a long-term project, and I'm not in a rush. I'm not probably not gonna wear it this season, so I just wanna get it done by next season. And it's very large for my size, and I'm, part of me regrets making it so big, and then part of me is okay with it, because I did want like that oversized sweatshirt feel. I don't know, you guys. I'm just, I, I am struggling with it a little bit if I made the right call to make it this big. We'll see. I'm going to keep going. And if I need to give it to somebody else because it's too big, that's okay. I will. But this is the pink fizz. I've separated for the, the sleeves. It's bottom. It's worked bottom up and it's a full lace pattern, like full lace panels. You have um, front and back these lace sections and it's lace on every row. You know, a lot of the times like a lace pattern I've found, at least the ones that I've knit are like lace there's a pattern on one side, but then it's knit or purl all the way back on the other side. And this is not that pattern. This is a pattern on every single um, row. So it does take a long time. When I sit down and work on it, I try to get about five rows in, and it, which is a lot easier right now because it's just worked back and forth since I'm still on the, um, I'm working on the front panel right now. But I like the construction of it. It's a drop sleeve sweater. It's a split hem and it's designed to be a little bit oversized. And I went even bigger than what I normally would because what I have found is that I try to go bigger and I think maybe my knitting, my gauge is just off. I will swatch everything and it, it just doesn't, it never pans out for me and it's always a little bit tighter fit than what I want. And so that's why I went even one size bigger. I'm not so sure that that was the best idea, but we'll find out. Okay, let's see if I have, I do have, I think I got four or five of these skeins of yarn. This is what I'm using. And it is from the Fiber Co. It's a um, Aaron, light Aaron Moore Donegal Heritage. It's a Tweety blend of fine merino wool, cashmere, and silk. It's not like to me it's a little bit toothy a little bit um rustic but the cashmere and silk kind of pull it back in i'm really curious if this is gonna wear well next to next to my skin i'm a little bit um sen sensitive i don't know like my skin just gets itchy so this is talic is what it's called colorway talic and it is um it has like gray and then like this light gray and oatmeal mix I really like it. I really like working with this um, yarn as well. Let me see if I can open up this pattern. Here's the pattern, Pink Fizz by Andrea Mowry. Yeah, and I've, the pattern that she gives, like the chart, it's full, it's fully charted. Um, so the, the, the chart that she gives is so small that I actually needed to like enlarge it over two sheets because it was, it was just too small. So, um, and I just feel like I'm getting older. My eyesight is not as well, it's not as good as it used to be. My, um, I think like within the last year and a half, I've upped my prescription 
uh, like gotten a stronger prescription for my contacts, which makes reading them a little bit harder. So I just enlarged it when I printed it out and it worked beautifully. Okay, so that's the third one. Do you guys hear the birds in the background? It's my favorite. I love it. I love hearing the birds just chirp in the trees. I love it. Okay. Um, oh, we're going to open this one up. I'm a little bit nervous because I think this is like my super long term. Yeah. I'm like I said, I'm a little bit embarrassed with this one. So I had some issues with the yarn on this one. Look at how little this is. And it's really not this little. Um, so I, yeah, I had some issues with the yarn on this one. And so I did like this panel down at the bottom. I, it's like a sport weight yarn. I really, I love this. I love the pattern. It has like this super fun detail on the, um, top of the shoulder and where my hang up is, <laughs> It will block like it stretches a ton it looks super little but it stretches a ton um, so where my hang up is is this little um, like rolled hem and I don't really did I have enough I have this here oh <laughs> okay so I have this left over. The other thing that I need to do is I need to cast on and knit the little rim of the um, the sleeves or the, the armholes because it is a tank. So I have this much for that and I'm really hoping that it's enough. Really, really hoping. Um, so with that said, I am, I don't even have, um, I don't even have it in here, but what I'm doing is sewing with thread um, the the hem down and I, this is kind of where I'm at so so I'm just sewing that down I'm about halfway <laughs> on the collar and it looks great like I mean look at that looks great I don't even know why I can't get this done. It's so silly, but literally this has been on my needles for like two years, you guys. Like, and it's so plump and it, it feels so good. I think I will really enjoy wearing this. I just need to finish it. And I have no idea what the yarn is. It's just like deep stash yarn. Okay, that one is a little bit embarrassing for me, honestly. And let's see. I don't even know what's in here. Oh, okay. I'm not, like this one is what it is. So this is, these are squares for a Battenberg blanket. And from what I understand, the Battenberg blanket is, um, you use quite a bit smaller squares, but I like the idea of the bigger squares on this. And it this, this is just bare yarn, fingering bare yarn held double. Um, I don't have any colors yet. I just have a few, three. I have three squares. I may or may not work on this. Like, I don't even know, but I just thought I would show you I was going to do this for my advent and it turned out that the Naughty Pine advent calendar was not big enough to get the squares that I needed. Um, I think I was trying to get two squares from each Naughty Pine advent and I could get one um, full one. And so I, that's just not what I wanted to do. Um, so that's, I don't know, an advent is so expensive and I just didn't want to only have one square in each in, in my blanket from that. So I may just kind of do like a, a real scrappy kind of feel and work some of my minis and my advent yarn and that kind of thing. I'm just not sure yet how that's gonna look. So 
that's just kind of sitting in limbo. It may just all come out. I have no idea. Not upset about that one. This one I stopped last year because I ran out of yarn and I was not expecting to run out of yarn and then I couldn't find it. I actually tried several times to order it and um, I couldn't. Um, and it was this ITO in cream, but it looks very peach. And so I forget where I ordered this, but every time they went to go like send this to me, cause I ordered it twice and they, they messaged me and like, Hey, we're so sorry, but we're out of it. And, um, it's because it looks so peachy. They didn't think that this was the right one, but then it, it was so, and my daughter's boyfriend just pulled up. So, um, this is the purple Coke tea from Katrine Snyder. Here is what it looks like. Um, I've actually really enjoyed working on this project. And so you hold these two together. These are the darker stripe. And then to get that little lighter stripe, you actually just drop this and only knit with your mohair. So these are both ITO. This is um, ITO Kainu in the cayenne red color. And this is um, in the Sensei, ITO Sensei, Sensei in the cream. These were actually, um, I saw these at Stitches West in 2023. And I saw this color combination was together. And so I, and I already actually had this, not really knowing what I was going to do with it. And, um, so I picked this up at Stitches West to finish the ensemble. And okay. So that one, I just need to finish it. Like it's, it's short sleeve. So I think, I am going to make it a little bit longer, I think, than what I had originally thought. I think I even toyed with the idea of making it long sleeve. So it's just like a very light sweater. I don't know, just because it, it is mohair. So I feel like it, it might be a little bit warm. I'm not sure. Either way, I have enough yarn now to do all that. So super excited about this though. I really, really love this color. I love the striping of it. It's super soft. I love it. So this is definitely like on my mind to get finished pretty quick. I just need to start it. And once I get started on it, I think I will fly. You know what happens with these stripes is you'll be knitting along and you just get in such a rhythm and then you go and you count and realize that you've done too many of the two stranded stripes and you got to rip back, which ripping back mohair is really not fun, but okay. Oh, I'm using a chow goo, my interchangeable set on a US four needle. And you use that for both, like the entire thing. Like even when you're just knitting with the mohair, you still use the same needles, everything. Okay, next. I forget what's even in here. Oh, this is a fun one. These are mittens from Meg Roke. So this was a stash yarn. Um, oh, that's so funny. I needed a US 7 for something. Oh, but this is my 9 inch. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I guess not. I thought that maybe I had um, taken this needle off, but I guess I didn't. So here is where I am at with these. I don't think I have the ball band in here. I do not have the ball band. But this is just my first one and I have started like increasing for the thumb. I've never made mittens successfully before. I made some last year and it did not work out. Look at this fun detail though. It's really, really pretty. I'm super excited about these. I have just put them down and did not pick them back up. Look at what I just found in here. Oh, I can't show you. 
candy floss socks. These are the socks that um, I've already showed you. There you go. Candy floss socks. That's so funny. I think I will put that right now in the right bag. Okay, I wanna know how many of you guys would have just set it off to the side or put it back in the wrong bag? Depending on the day, I could have done any of those things. So no judgment from me, I promise. <laughs> okay, so mittens from, here I'll show you the skein of yarn. I don't even have the ball band, but it was one that I actually got free. I think like what used to be craftsy, like cloud something, or I'm not sure, but it's um, at, Stitches, I want to say this was pre-COVID stitches or maybe even like the February before COVID or something. I don't know. I can't remember, but it was right around that time. And I want to say that they were giving out like free skeins of yarn at their Stitches booth. And so I think, I, I don't even think I paid anything for this, honestly. Just kind of fun. But doing those mittens, it is not non-super wash, so I know that's not the best for mittens. From what I understand, non-super er, non wash is the best for mittens, but I don't know. Okay. Oh, we'll talk dishcloths in a minute. Here's the other project. This is a long-term project. This is the alignment throw from Heidi and Lana, Margaret from Heidi and Lana. And I have one more cross on this strip. So this is a strip blanket. It's a long-term one. I, it's totally fine not being done, but it is on the needles. And my goal for this is two crosses a month, which I've done great at this entire year. Now I have two more panels and with the five crosses, I may actually take the um, bind off off and add another cross. So I did have to modify this pattern. I've talked about it before how I modified it, but basically I just did, because I'm using fingering held double and the pattern is for like a 25 gram DK weight um, yarn, I was doing fine at first and then it, um, like using the, one of her fingering weight skeins, like mini from her Patreon account. Um, so I was doing great having enough yarn and then all of a sudden I, um, started running out and so I had to rip that back and I just modified her pattern so and I, I think I talked about that in my last episode so you can go there for that but I'm just using her patreon minis as the cross colors and then just a bare yarn um, for the main color and this is in Tarja knitting so you literally when you're doing these color sections you have three balls of um, yarn that you're working from because you have this guy this first uh, main color you have your contrast color and then your second main color um, skein over here so for those of you that know in Tarja knitting it's it sounds super fancy and it is cool but it's really not hard so I totally encourage you guys to try it if you want I'm like waiting in limbo for my daughter and boyfriend to come out because they're going to go out to a park and I'm just waiting for them to come out. <laughs> so, Okay, then this next project, this is the Autumn Lines Pullover. It's a Knit Picks pattern. Um, let's see. Look at how beautiful that is. I love this and I almost frogged it, you guys. I was, so this is the same um, yarn that I used for my ranunculus and I absolutely loved it for my ranunculus. I loved the texture, like the fabric that it made, the larger stitches and I, that, I knit the ranunculus on a US 10 and for this pattern here I was using a US 7 and I was just not enjoying this. Like the fabric was just kind of tough to work through the needles. It, wasn't draping it just felt very stiff but the 
the lacy yoke part of it, the chevron lacy yoke fit pretty well and it had enough, um, like, I don't know, the fabric was just better because it's lacy and yarn overs and all that kind of stuff. So instead of frogging it completely, I frogged it all the way back to the lace, which was not an easy task because you have to figure out then where your raglan increases are, where the front and the back are, etc. Because then you move where your beginning of round is. So it's not as easy as just finding where your um, yarn tail is and, you know, working your way down from there. But I'm pretty sure that I figured it all out. Um, I just have a couple more sleeve increases before I um, separate for the sleeves and the body, but this is, it's a concept by Katia. It's a cotton merino. And this is, I think it's called like woolen spun. It's very airy is what this is, so. Um, and it just says color 103. So I know I bought this from Etsy, from a seller on Etsy. Um, I feel like her price is fair and I think when you purchase a certain amount you get free shipping. But I do think it's coming from the UK so it might take a little bit of time. But I'm really, oh my gosh there's a hawk like right above. That was pretty cool actually like it it was like a lighter like cream colored and then it had um like these stripes going on its tail it was really pretty anyways um i am so happy with this and i'm excited that i didn't just frog it completely so i went up to a size us 9 needle and went from a 7 to a 9 and i didn't go the full 10 because i didn't since i didn't frog the lace part of it. I didn't want there to be too much of a discrepancy, but when I tried it on, there were like right where the points of the chevron pattern come, it puckered up a little bit. And I kind of think that going up to the size US 9 is going to mask that a little bit better. Um, and I'm sure blocking it will help as well, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about this and really, really enjoying working on it now and I just I wasn't before so I've actually picked this up several times since I've taken this out and I just took it out last week but I it's kind of like my go-to project right now because although it's just stock net and, it, and raglan increases it's pretty easy and I like I said I just have a couple more increase rows to go and then it'll just be stock net for days and it should go pretty quick because my ranunculus went so fast with the larger needles and that yarn. Okay, the two last projects that I have are dish cloth projects. So we're jumping on over to the Back Porch Fiber Co. Dish Cloth Make Along. Um, hashtag is down below. And um, yeah, let's get going. So I'm gonna start with the crochet one more just letting you guys know what I'm doing. I don't have enough on the needle on the hook to really show anything. And this is it. That's all I got. Just this little tiny start. So funny thing. So this is the um, Friends Cotton 8 for I think it's like icy ice blue or something like that. I'm loving this fingering weight cotton yarn you guys. Um, okay, so funny thing, I had this on the, like in the book, it was wrapped up in the book where the pattern is, and I had my crochet hook there, and I went to get an oil change in my car, and I noticed when I got back from, like when I got back into my car from the oil change that the um, dishcloth was like coming out of the book, and I'm like, okay, that's weird, it must have just slipped out. Well, then I bring it inside, I get home from the oil change, I bring it all inside, and I can't find my crochet hook. Well, it's, a, like, it's an expensive set. I get the, the tulip crochet hooks. It's expensive. 
and I use this one for all of my dishcloths. Like I, I have to have this one. And um, so I'm like looking all over the house, looking in the, the pack. I'm like, okay, maybe I just brought that in, but why would I just bring in the hook without everything else? Because it was in my car for a couple days and it just didn't, wasn't really making sense. And then I'm going over my um, invoice from the oil change and I see that they vacuumed my car. They vacuumed my hook and they never told me. So this is Jiffy Lube. I don't know if Jiffy Lubes are everywhere, but they're here in California. They vacuumed up my crochet hook. First of all, I think they knew. I think they knew that they sucked something up because how do you, I mean, how do you not know when this gets sucked up, right? You have to hear that. But they didn't say anything. They never said anything. I got home and I called them and I'm like, hey, I, so I think this is what happened. I'm like, okay, well, let me go check the, the canister. Sure enough, there it was. Are you kidding me? A little bit frustrating, but I got it back. Thank goodness. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so the pattern that I'm working on is I'm gonna put this in front of the pattern because it is from a book, it, but it is called Euranthus. I think it's a beautiful like springy dishcloth. This was for March for me. I was really hoping to get this done in March and it just did not happen. Um, but it says this pattern is reminiscent of fine little Oranthus flowers. The cloth has the same delicate pattern on both sides. It's definitely a cloth that you'll want to crochet again and again. Um, it's too soon to tell for me. So yeah, so too soon to tell if this is going to be a pattern that I want to crochet again and again. But nonetheless, it went from March to April for my crochet dishcloth pattern. So if you are working out of this book and following what I'm doing, I'm sorry if I'm disappointing anybody, but that is, I just could not get to it. March was just a busy, busy month for us. So especially like I had so many things on the, on the needles too, and just other goals that I needed to work on. Um, so little side note, my knitting, my Friday morning knitting group, there were five of us that were um, casting on a ranunculus sweater and I actually had to just stop. I had to bow out because it was causing me so much stress having one more thing on the needles. Like how I have multiple garments on the needles right now. How do I add another one onto that? And it's getting to be springtime, like it's spring, summer's coming. So I would really actually rather work if I was going to cast something else on I would rather work on a like a short sleeve top instead and I have a lot of patterns that I want to do for that so I just couldn't okay then next my April knit dishcloth that I'm doing this month and it is from the easy knit dishcloth book I do have an affiliate link that I'll pop down below in the comments in the description comments sorry, in the description, not the comments. Um, if you want to purchase from my affiliate link, I don't know, I get a little kickback. It's, it's really not much. <laughs> I don't even know what it is, but I think I have like less than a dollar in my affiliate account right now. So, you know, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I'm concerned about. <laughs> okay, so I am doing the parallelogram. Um, show you. It is this pattern here, parallelogram on page 49. Um, I actually had a different pattern picked out for the month. I was going to do just the next one in line. It was a cable stitch pattern. Um, this is the one I was going to do. And I was talking with my friend Jenny Lynn who um, really like inspired the whole dishcloth make along for me. And um, she showed me the parallelogram pattern and she goes, I was really hoping that maybe you would do this one. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't started. I can do that one. I'm like, you pick. So this is the one that she picked and it did not disappoint. I just started it this morning. I'm one repeat through. It's a 10 row repeat. I am really enjoying it. It is something like where after you get the first like few stitches for the row, it's the same 
on every row after that um or like for the rest of the row yeah so really like the only part that changes is like the beginning and the end of each row and even the end kind of you just know it works itself out so uh, but I am choosing a very similar color to what is here in the photo it is like this corally it's friend it's um friends eight four it's a fingering weight color 36 and the front and the back are exactly the same I think yeah yeah they're the same so this is where I'm at one repeat in I'm really enjoying it so thank you so much Jenny Lynn for the encouragement for this one I'm loving it I like this color a lot it just screams spring to me really really enjoying this so if you guys want to um, do this one as well for your dishcloth make along I'd love to see those I am enjoying so much seeing all of your dishcloths and the fun part about this for me is that there are times where this just kind of sits and I'm working on other projects and I'll see somebody tag um, use the hashtag uh, BPFC dishcloth mal and I see that and then I just instantly want to start working on my dishcloth so I hope like you guys have mentioned in a lot of comments that like that I'm inspiring you to get some dishcloth knitting done but you guys are also inspiring me to stay at it and keep it going and it's so fun I love this community you guys it is amazing so um, you can use any pattern any way of making it you can sew you can crochet you can weave you can knit we're just making dishcloths you can even do like pot holders or um, coasters like mug rugs that kind of thing it's really like just these small projects you can use cotton yarn you can not but that's just that's kind of what we're doing like these small little household projects is what I envision for this but um, yeah I am really enjoying this dishcloth make along and I like as my pile of dishcloths grow it just looks so pretty I love it um, and I've started using them which is a little bit nerve-wracking and I don't know why like I'm making them to use it's kind of silly um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys as well is the um, subscription boxes for the dishcloth um, like it's a dishcloth subscription box that I'm putting together for June July and August I'm having so much fun curating those boxes um, designing a pattern my friend Jenny Lynn that I just mentioned about the parallelogram pattern she's gonna test a pattern for me and I think um, I would love your guys's feedback on this so something that I had had kind of in the back of my mind but I hadn't given it a full train of thought yet but then Jenny Lynn mentioned it um, at knit group on Friday about testing out um, or like for each box since I'm doing three months doing a worsted, a sport, and a fingering, like one each month. And so that you guys get to experiment and try out the different yarn weights um, through this subscription box. Um, or I also feel like there's a lot of you guys that are just super intrigued by the fingering weight cotton yarn and so is that what's getting you guys interested in the dishcloth um, subscription box? Would it be fun to try out the worst of the sport and the fingering? Um, each box will have a skein of yarn. It'll have a super friendly, like free beginner pattern, but then it will also have a um, pattern that I have designed as well. And then it will have some yarn goodies in there too that are just exclusive to the subscription boxes that I will not be um, putting in the shop there may be one um, item that um, will be in the shop as well that I will pop in as a little bonus for you guys because it's something that I am designing and I am so smitten with it so um, but it's definitely something that I want to add to my shop but I may include that in your guys's boxes as well as an little bonus 
So anyways, um, let me know. Let me know what sounds fun to you. Like I think subscription boxes are so much fun because you get to try different things that you may have not picked out and sometimes you just absolutely love those things. Um, but, and it, you know, it's just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So please help me with this. This is my first subscription box that I am putting together. And I think like, I want to, I want to present something to you guys that you will just love and are super excited about just like I am. So, um, thank you for all the feedback that you guys have been giving me so far because I really, really appreciate it and it has just been helping me to curate these boxes. I have started, um, the other thing that I have on the needles, oh, I meant to grab that blanket. Okay, I'll get it. But the other thing that I have on the needles is that I'm not gonna show is a design for, um, for the dishcloth knit alongs. I do have a dishcloth pattern on the needles. It's in a worsted weight yarn and it's a super fun pattern. Um, okay, before I show you guys the pattern that I want to start, my next sock pattern, outside of all of this, let me go real quick and grab my last project that I have on the needles for you guys. Okay, let's see. So this one sits in a big basket because it is, it's a big project. Um, I get a little bit worried because we do, especially right now, this time of year, we are dealing with carpet beetles, which get in the yarn. So once I discovered these carpet beetles and that they love to eat wool and fibers, all natural fibers, um, I, as soon as something, as soon as yarn enters into my house, unless it's an active project that I'm working on, um, it goes into bags or glass containers or Ziploc bags or whatever from ever since I found that out. So, um, but anyways, so this is, it's just a pattern. Um, it's similar to like the Northeasterly, but I just, I don't know how many stitches were cast on with that. I don't know what the pattern is with that. I just saw that blanket and I'm like, oh, I can totally figure that out. So I just did. Um, so see, like, can you guys see this little spot right here? That's what happens when it just sits out and it makes me super sad. I think that's the only one. I think that's the only spot that it is, um, eaten up, but I'll just, I'll fix it. It's not a big deal. It's a scrappy blanket and I do really love it. I think I'm probably about done. I think I'm going to just, I think I'm done because I just feel done. I just feel like I'm not, I haven't picked this up in probably a year, which I think is just telling. So I think I'll probably finish this strip and, um, mend that hole and then I'll be done with it. But I, I don't know, like when I, when I look at this now, I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, but I'm, I don't know why I just am not enjoying working on it. It's kind of silly, but so this is like a deep, deep stash project, like a deep whip. There you go. That's a deep whip, but yeah, a little bit sad about this little section here, but I can fix it. It's not a big deal. Like, and really when I fix it, like I just kind of like weave everything together. It's a garter stitch, um, scrappy blanket. It's not a big deal to me. So I'll just find a similar color or I might even still have that color. I don't know, but I have some next, um, yarns in here. So we'll, We'll see where that goes, but that's the last one. Okay. One more thing that I want to share with you guys is this super fun pattern that is, um, it's called Larch Peds by Laura Nelkin. Let me make sure. Yeah. I think that all of this stuff here is in like on her, her pattern page. So, um, but these are called Larch Peds. It is a cuff 
um, like a shorty sock and it has this really cool ribbed um, cuff, like a tab, it's kind of like a tab sock. I went ahead and bought the pattern. She has so many um, tutorials to go along with this. Like I think she has like an hour long tutorial, but she uses the barber cord to um, work her, I think she uses that maybe for her provisional cast on and for her, um, her heel flap to pick up those stitches. Like she wraps it around and she has tutorials on her uh, Instagram. She has reels on her Instagram as well. Super fun idea. And I have um, barber cords to bring to the shop and I just have not had a minute to take pictures of them and bring them to the shop. So I'm excited um, to get those in the shop, hopefully this week. And I have a new sticker to come to the shop this week as well. And yeah, so barber cord stickers, and then there is another fun little paper item. I'm so excited about it, but I don't even want to share it yet because it's not done yet. So <laughs> I'm so excited. It's something that has been in my mind for days, like probably for the last year that is finally almost done. Congratulations to number 265, Linda Grootsmacher. So you'll be here on the screen. Look at that. So Linda, you have won. So this was for a Instagram post. Um, so you have won the um, Friends Fingering Weight Cotton uh, Dishcloth Yarn <laughs> in the Latte colorway. You have won three sets of needle stoppers in a hexagon, a circle, and a lentil shape, all um, browns, coffee inspired, and a set of progress keepers, coffee inspired as well. So um, Linda, reach out to me, send me an email with your, um, with your address. You can also just DM me on Instagram as well, since we're both on there. And I would love to send your prize out ASAP. Congratulations. Thank you.